Hello, I'm Casey Aiken, and this is 21 This Week. Coming up next, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan delivers the State of the State message. Why do the legislature in Annapolis want to make Maryland a sanctuary state? And some in Annapolis want to legalize marijuana. And if your energy bill went up, thank the General Assembly. Stay tuned. Our panel of insiders will give you the story behind the story. We're joined by the former president of the Montgomery County branch of the NAACP, Henry Halestock, Republican and railroad industry consultant, Phil Bell, Republican National Committee woman, Nicolee Ambrose, and the former majority leader of the Maryland House of Delegates, John Herson. Stay tuned for these stories and more on the next 21 This Week. Maryland, Maryland Republican Governor Larry Hogan delivered his third State of the State message this week. As reported by WBAL-TV, Hogan introduced his most a ambitious legislative agenda during his first term in office by submitting far-reaching proposals touching on everything from the environment to public safety. According to the governor, Maryland is the, in the top 10 states for overall economic performance and third in entrepreneurial business growth. The governor proposed $6.4 billion on education funding, plans to expand reforms in criminal justice system, and increased investment in the Chesapeake Bay Trust Fund. John, while every governor wants to highlight the accomplishments of his administration, how do you think this governor is doing? Um, generally, okay. Um, but I will tell you his address was full of, let's plan to do this. I have a plan to do that. I want to do this in the next term. I want to, it's all plans. I mean, the guy's been in office for two years. The best two years to get stuff done is the first and second year, when they've got the most popularity, when they are, they've got the most incentive behind them because they've just won an election. He still has got a lot on his plate that he thinks he's going to get done. I'm going to tell you, it's going to be really hard for that stuff to get done in the last two years. I'm not saying he hasn't done anything yet, but he's got a lot of stuff Is that because up. the Democratic legislature won't, won't cooperate with, the gen, with, with him as governor? That's his job to get it done, okay? He's the governor. He needs to work with the legislature and get it done. But, I, uh, I'm just telling you, he's got a lot of stuff that he wants to get done, and he hasn't done it yet. Let's go to so, Nick Lee. Nick Lee, which, which of these accomplishments of the governor do you think is most impressive? And does, will he be able to get... accomplishments? Will he be able to get something something done in the future? Well, great question. I have to say, I think, John, you and I heard a different state of the state address. I heard the governor stressing bipartisan things that have been accomplished and specifically what are those? specific policy Tell me what, they are, what he would Nicole. like to get done. What are the bipartisan things he's gotten done? So what he talked about, for example, education funding that for some reason people are attacking him on, he has maximally funded education well, he every single for the county first in the two state. Years. First no, two years he funded he just it cut according it. to yes, the formula. And furthermore, he's also building more schools and fixing schools, which in many counties badly needed. I think Montgomery County Citizens would they particularly are really like badly students needed. He not cut it out being for the first in two trailers he because cut it out your for the first government two years. has Hold put on, people let her, let in let trailers let her, let her, let her here. Finish. So I do appreciate Governor Hogan trying to step up and take care of the stuff that's not happened at the county level, say particularly in Montgomery County. Secondly, because I do appreciate they're supposed to do it and not the county. They're supposed to be building Montgomery these schools county and they haven't done is it. Is putting people in trailers so. Your kids, because my kids the might state be in trailers has not funded well, but, but, but John, the problem with, is there's not, not enough money in the state. There was a big deficit coming in that, the, that Hogan inherited. Phil, one of the problems also is the fact that we now have a $500 million deficit instead of a $400 million surplus because not enough rich people paid capital gains tax last year. What's going to happen in the legislature to cure that problem? Well, it's not because not enough rich people <laughs> paid capital gains tax last year. It's because there are a lot of people that hang out in a place called the General Assembly, and they continue to spend and spend and spend and spend. There's no reason that a state like Maryland what, with, well, you know, that's, spending it on? that's a very, very good question. Yeah, and but you yet, say it like wait, they're wait spending it on, like, restaurants and stuff like that. 
Well, they're I'm not sure doing that. They're we, actually spending it on health care. If we come through the schools. budget close enough, we can find some really? restaurants. What? Obviously, what? you've been in the well, legislature, so you know some of what the uh, the bills, the spending bills are that come out. And I got to tell you, I've taken the time to actually read through some of it, and it's heavy. It's big spending, and there's a lot of debt what? associated with it. Well, what? Look, are you with Phil, the next time we're Phil on, and I'm going to have go to, a I book want to go to Henry on, on something that I think is important. Because the governor said he wanted to increase the number of P-TECH schools in Maryland to produce more skilled workers into the technical fields and, the, and supports charter school expansion. Are those good proposals? Well, I, I got to tell you, yes, the P-TECH, I, I believe in because they're not everyone wants to go to a four-year school for uh, additional education. I think it's uh, important that you, you have uh, schools that are able to give a student opportunities to uh, get skills, particularly in the in the tech IT uh, area, to gain eventually a uh, associate's degree in college. That's that's tremendous. I like the way that, that he's basically doing that. However, I get tired of hearing this misnomer about charter schools because I don't think they're any better than the public schools. To me, it's taking away, and, and I'm not the only one that thinks this, uh, it's taking away from public school funding. Uh, it had been some studies, and I know we hate to talk about the studies, but uh, they did studies on math, not uh, reading and everything, because you do have parents that work on reading with their kids and everything else. And there was no we difference between up, charter edge, private schools, and public school education as far as dealing with math. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time in this segment, but we're going to talk about more things in the General Assembly as uh, over the next 60 days. But let's go on to our second topic, which are some lawmakers in Annapolis are urging the General Assembly to legalize the recreational use of marijuana. According to State Senator Rich Modellino, other states are bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue without any increase in crime. Other boosters of the, of the plan say that the taxes would bring in hundreds of millions of dollars in needed revenue that would be divided among the schools that serve poor students, addiction treatment programs, job training programs, and programs to combat uh, driving under the influence. John, how did we end up in a world where big gulps are being banned in New York while welcoming the use of marijuana being rolled out in Colorado, and do we really want it here in Maryland? So let me ask you a question. Is the uh, Republican senator from Colorado a pothead? Did I say he was a pothead? Well, you said everybody in Colorado is a no, pothead. No, I, I, I didn't say that, John. That's kind of what you implied. I, what I said was that they've, they've legislated pot use in, in Colorado. They have. Does that mean everybody in Colorado is addicted to pot? No, but I think it's such a dangerous trend. It's not good for society for, for the legalization of marijuana. Well, and do we really want it here in Maryland? So here's here's my answer to that. I mean, just the because just because it brings in tax revenue doesn't mean that we should I, do I, it. I understand that. Do you? Do you but th here's you think my that question: Every to you. Ill illicit, improper program should be made legal if we can make money off it? No, I don't. Well, I mean, you that sounds like gambling. capitalism, no, John. we did it with gambling. We did it with alcohol, but I guess we can't do it with well, We can't do it with everything. Let, let me let me go, let me go back to the substance. So we don't need the tax revenue. The issue is whether or not Maryland should look at this. That's all they're talking about in the no, state legislature. Th th they are talking about... There, there, are, there are other proposals that would put the, put the I'm initiative just telling before you, they, the, before they're starting the, voters. the process to look at it. A bunch of states, at least five states, have now done it for recreational use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can learn from their experience. I'm not saying we should do it, but we should definitely investigate this possibility, right? You know, John, as, they, as a possibility. You problem. just don't like marijuana. No. I get it. No, what I, I don't, it, what I, what I don't you like. You don't like it. What I but don't, that's, what but I that's don't not like, where the rest of the world is at the no, moment. No, what I don't like is, is uh, creating a generation of people who are going to be lethargic in a world where we have to be competitive. Nicolay, how is it that cigarette smokers are pariahs while people who smoke weed are being cheered when smoking marijuana is even more toxic than cigarette smoke? Couldn't agree with you more. I don't understand it, and w what I specifically look at is the science behind it. You look at brain scans, particularly of adolescents who experiment or take marijuana, and their brain activity have you looked is at affected. Brain scans? I have indeed looked have at you them, really? and I have actually studied That's this. Amazing. And what you'll find if you I research this, I really don't believe you. 
<laughs> well, John, well, I you've mean, actually well, looked at them. I have actually let's, let's looked not at them. Atta- let's not, I, you know, attack. I was taught to read, and I went to Johns Hopkins, and I educate myself instead of just getting up and spouting off emotion on TV shows. So there are great oh, brain really? You don't spout off children, emotion on TV shows? You would I don't believe care that. that your child's brain is permanently altered by taking marijuana, and you would not want your government to encourage your child to have a permanently altered brain with less activity that is capable of less. And what we actually care about, you mentioned the point, ultimately I would like my children and all of our children to be productive members of society. And if they have permanently damaged their brain because totally we've said, agree with hey, you, let's Nicole. make money totally off of Totally agree, but I don't think that you're is right. Wrong. You don't know the science you, on this. You have no clue of what right. you're talking about. I have you no don't. clue. I can't have tell no idea. the brain scan. Well, I, I can't wanna, read right. articles Let's, from our nation's leading medical institutions. We, we, don't we know can exchange your views. Because I'm a woman, too, let's throw that in there while we're at it. I think it's inappropriate just to, to attack Nicoli. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Well, it's John, you can Are disagree. Are you saying you, I'm illiterate? You, you I'm can, really you can trying to understand where you're going with it. You can disagree with Nicoli, but I think it's inappropriate to attack her the way you just did. Phil. Now, it's universally recognized that people who do smoke marijuana are unmotivated and are not, are not going to be competitive in the world. We are now in the fourth world uh, industrial revolution we are th- where technology is moving at a fast speed and people have to learn to be able to keep up. We're not doing a good job of it. And so is, is legalizing marijuana going to help the process? No, it's a terrible idea. You know, it's, it's funny. I go to Burger King. I go to McDonald's. I, I, you can tell I go there a lot. <laughs> and what you're starting to see are more and more of these kiosks where you can just push a button and, and do your ordering. And one of the biggest things that a lot of the marijuana advocates always like to say is, you know, when I'm high, I'm not doing anything. All I want to do is sit around. I don't want to cause any trouble. Are, <laughs> that means they are going to be less productive. That means they are going to be less able. Henry, to I wanted I want I wanted to wrap it up with you because I wanted to talk about the criminal aspects of marijuana use. And there's certainly a cost to keeping it illegal, but there's also a cost of of, of making it legal and creating people that are more dependent on drugs. You got about 30 seconds to wrap it up. Well, I, all I can say is this: is that you know, uh, marijuana, alcohol. Uh, all of these addiction things are, are, are really wrong, period. But if we're going to have it, I, have, I, have, I don't have a problem in legalizing. That's what they did with liquor. That's what they should do with marijuana because it can be regulated. And right now it's illegal. Uh, let's make it legal, benefit from it, and regulate it. Because if it's not regulated, uh, people are going to unlawfully benefit from it. That's okay, what I'm Thank doing. you. When we come back from the short break, we'll increase requirements to use renewable energy increase your electric bills, and why do those people in Annapolis want to make Maryland a sanctuary state? Stay tuned. I got a question. I don't know what I what the hell Maybe I read today. The Welcome back. Well, I, I quoted the new the Los Angeles Times, and if you want to quote, if you have a problem with the Los Angeles Times, call the Los Angeles Times. There, you better start monitoring your electric bill because according to Governor Hogan, the bill is about to go up soon. And you can thank the members of the Democratic Party and the General Assembly for the reason. State legislators voted overwhelmingly to require Maryland utility companies to buy more energy from sources such as wind turbines, solar panels, and hydroelectric dams while overriding Governor Hogan's veto. Hogan had objected to the increase in cost for electricity. Nicoly, according to the aforementioned LA Times, one of the hidden costs of solar and wind power is that wind and solar energy must be backed up by other sources, typically gas-fired generators. The conclusion being that you need more, not less, investment in fossil fuel production. Why are lawmakers so infatuated with solar and wind? Do they think it's free? You would think so, by the rush to come up with alternative plants that maybe aren't the best for our geographical location. I am all, I, 
personally am a conservationist. I love the concept of exploring all different types of technology, but we have to be smart with it. Um, we are kind of finding our trap and putting Maryland into the same trap that, say, for example, Germany has found itself in, where we will now create redundant, repetitive, and doubly expensive systems because we cannot entirely depend on wind. We cannot entirely depend on solar, and we need a 100% backup to when those systems aren't mm -hmm. performing. So I would just prefer that we utilize alternative forms of energy, but in a way that does not double our costs and double really our production needs because the first form is inconsistent. Can, can, can I uh, ask a question? Because before doing our break, I asked this question. How relevant is it or how reasonable is it to assume that the electrical companies are going to need this backup plan let's say for solar solar energy um when we when it totally depends i'm as a homeowner totally depends on solar energy coming from the sun and the backup plants for the homes are basically you know you said the, the companies but well what would what, what i mean the, the the problem with solar and wind is that they're dependent on nature okay and they can be cloudy days and they can be and and not produce enough sunlight to produce enough solar electricity and there can be w windless days when the turbines aren't working. So therefore, in order to have a consistent supply of electricity to the homeowners, mm -hmm. they have to have a backup source of generation. And those, those backup sources of generation are usually gas-fired turbines. But it has to be, and this is the, the other part of your question, it has to be available all the time. Now we had coal as base load. A coal plant is always operating, you're always yeah. adding to it, so it's not a big deal to begin to filter more into the grid from there. Mm -hmm. But now if you have a gas generator where we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna turn it off, you mm -hmm. have to fire it up, everything that goes into doing that, yeah, that's where a lot of this can come from. And the prices fluctuate more. But uh, uh, okay, uh, understand but you still this. Give me, give me a, plant give me, well, give you, me you a, a, a you different. Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. me, right. give me a different uh, scenario because even though it may be cloudy, you're still getting rays from the sun, and and it will. But it's uh, a, it's it will the amount of electricity that's that's being produced in de in determining whether or not the, uh, to meet the demands of the electricity that's that's needed. Mm -hmm. the elect you're right. Th there are th there will be get natural gas plants. Uh, that are in production that mm -hmm. will be put on standby production. Correct. The fact is, as, as Phil mentioned, the turbo turbines still have to be fired. They still have to. Be, they still have to be producing a certain amount right. because but they we're can't. Not, they we're can't not talking be generated. About, we're not talking we're, about a world where there is only wind and you're right, solar. You're right. There's going to be a combination. I mean that. That's naturally, that's what but economy the, but, is going to do. But, but the Your false, implication the, was no, the that there's got to be this like no, John, fire up from no, John, each of these plants. The, 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 well, that, they have to. They, they have to be. Mm -hmm. They have to be uh, in production. The falsehood that is produced by the the green energy advocates is mm -hmm. that wind and solar will solve all of I our don't energy needs. I think that's needs. what they're saying. I think they're saying we need to move towards more natural. Uh, energy production, mm -hmm. uh, if it was which more, this you know U.S. administration. If it was more cost do. efficient and let the market let the market dictate it, we wouldn't have sure. to have a mandate from the General Assembly. Let's talk about that, that mandate. That which is your next segment. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, you don't have to read what's on the screen. There. Well, actually, the, the mandate. <laughs> there is a mandate that's being discussed in in the General Assembly, called including Maryland because they're upset about the policies of uh, President Donald Trump. And one of those plans is the Maryland Trust Act, which would uh, eliminate the cooperation of deportation authorities. In other words, they want to make Maryland a sanctuary state. All right. Well, let, let me talk about I'm the energy thing really quickly. Okay. Um, Go ahead. You know, it is up to the uh, Public Service Commission, which is controlled by Republicans right now, to grant those increases in costs. They don't have to do that. Okay. They actually don't have to do it. These guys can apply under the, the act that was passed by the legislature for increases. They don't have to agree to it. So go call Tony O'Donnell, who's on the Public Service Commission, and tell him not to vote for the increases. Wonderful. Okay, you need to do that. <laughs> I'll do that, <laughs> you John. Do that. You. I know you're really concerned about it. So I mean, what I about am. sanctuary states? Uh, okay, go ahead. Let's go uh, with you, sanctuary You want to start? States. Are you ready? You're sure, fired up let's tonight. let's go for it. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why, why are... 
legislature so concerned about these proposals? Uh, here, here's what I think about sanctuary states. Um, first of all, it's pejorative, which I don't think should be used that way. What you're talking about is the federal government telling local police forces what to do, mm -hmm. and that's not good, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I think local police forces need to have the independence to decide how to enforce the laws of the local jurisdiction. What the federal government is trying to say, you know, the Trump administration is trying to say in this quote unquote sanctuary state thing is you must follow our rules when you, ha you are dealing with somebody who's not documented. And I frankly think that's wrong. I think the federal government is overpowering the state uh, enforcement agencies, but federal, and not state, uh, local. But, but, but John, but John hey, the, hey, federal, government, the federal government How? sets mandates and, and requirements on the states on a whole plethora it, of it, issues, not just, not just, not just immigration. They, they, whether it's state, it's, it's highway funding, whether, whether, it's, whether it's education, there are all kind of demands and requirements that the states react to with the federal government. How is this any different? If I may, we are talking apples and oranges here. I am all for states' rights and local control. However, things like immigration and people who are illegally in this country that have violated our sovereign national laws, right? Federal law controls who goes across our borders, or it should, according to our Constitution on all acts passed by Congress. Thus, if you don't follow federal law, what on earth, what law are you going to follow if you cannot follow federal law based on who comes in and out of this country? So you would approve of the federal government telling a police officer in Kensington that if he finds anybody who's undocumented, he has to like deport, take them down to the, to, and arrest them and put them in a jail cell and call the federal I government. I would ask him to follow the Department of Homeland Security but, 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 but guidance that's not because being if proposed, someone, John. I'm just this asking now, what now, you John, want. John, John, no, let me no, ask no. John, let me tell you a quick story. I would like them to follow fo no. federal guidance. And that's what you're saying. You want that you have no to arrest idea. them and let's put talk, them in jail. Let's, let's talk a little. Yeah, let's talk a little. Yes, let's talk a little. Henry, I want to talk a little bit. Look, 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 let's talk a little bit. The biggest issue I have with doing that is asking a local police officer to disregard his full duty and working with the community for trust issues because he can't do his, he or she can't do their job if the community does not trust them at all. They have to go in the community and ask the community for their cooperation in apprehending, getting evidence, and moving forward. How are they going to do that when they're concerned about their well-being, their, their uh, livelihood, and they're, whether they're going to be in or out or be detained because they think they may be uh, uh, illegal aliens or a trust issue. That's my concern, the trust issue. That, that you okay. have, you have, you we have, gotta, we gotta wrap it up. We're running, we're coming to a we hard have, break. We have people, we have people this is that a, are, this can do their job. This topic isn't gonna go away. We've been talking you know? about it for exactly. a long time. If it's a criminal act, no, yes. Criminal if you, it's a criminal you, act and you find them that, that, uh, that on, they're guilty or yeah. that, then that's when you go to the full nine yards. But until then, you know, come on. We got a hard break. Police officers have enough to do. We're getting, the, we're getting yanked, Henry. We're going to get cut off the air. So what else is new? Stay tuned for Parting <laughs> Shots. <laughs> this has been a great Thank show. You. And welcome back. <laughs> now with Parting Shots, Nicole Ambrose. I have been really concerned about the demise of free thought and the rise of intolerance in this country. Um, it's been shocking to see people, if they don't agree with you, saying that you're illiterate or can't read or haven't read. It's really disturbing to see my children in school being told that if they have a different opinion from someone else that um, they are any series of horrible names of which they've done nothing to earn these concepts other than having a different opinion. So I just encourage all of us to teach our kids that it's America. We encourage different opinions and free thought, and let's get back to our roots. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. John Herson, your parting shot. I actually agree with Nicolay. We should all be free to express what we want to say. Um, I, I think uh, I actually want to do a shout out to a Republican appointee of the Trump administration. Um, uh, 
The new um, ambassador to the UN um, is a fantastic ambassador. She has uh, stepped up and done the right thing, which is to express a continuation of a policy on uh, opposing um, the Russian aggression. Um, and I applaud her for doing that. Thank you, John. Henry Hillstock, your party shot. Since everybody has taken what I thought about saying, I'll say this. Uh, we have free speech. We have uh, rights to uh, demonstrate. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's do it in a proper manner. Uh, let's uh, cut out the violence because that's not doing more than just downgrading what you're trying to uh, voice. And we can do a better job of doing that. Right. And our civil rights uh, fighters in the past and even in the present understand that and have taught that. Let's understand our teachings. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Phil, very quickly. Earlier this week in Atlanta, I saw the very same airplane that the underwear bomber, the infamous underwear bomber, tried to blow up along with 289 other people who were aboard. And this week, having seen the Trump executive order, it was ironic to see that jet and very, very remindful of the fact that we need executive orders like that and strong immigration enforcement. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for a very spirited and lively debate tonight. Uh, not quite what I, what I was uh, expecting. I want to thank you all for being here. I hope the, hope the viewers uh, enjoyed what you saw tonight and tune in each and every week to Montgomery County's hardest hitting political talk show. We sent some haymakers tonight. Uh, for 21 this week, I'm Casey Aiken. <laughs>